the 4th of July, the American holiday of celebrating our independence from the British Empire. You know, Congress actually voted for independence two days earlier on the 2nd of July, which just so happens to be my birthday, kind of solidifying my awesomeness, but that's not really important right now. 1776 marked the year, and as a brand new nation, we were destined for greatness. Here's just a few things we provided. 1853, George Crumb invents potato chips. That's right, he's the first man to drop a floppy potato in some oil. You know, I have it on good authority that if it was not for Crumb, the potato chip would not have been invented until... Now. Right now. So if you've enjoyed the sweet crunch and savory salt of potato chips before right now, yeah, show some respect. And plus, I mean, his name was Crumb, and he invented the potato chips. <laughs> that, that's too perfect. That would be like someone named Sir Francis Bacon inventing oh, a secret way to hide a message. What the hell? That's not funny at all. Oh, wait, wait, he did another one here. There's another one by Bacon. Water desalinate. Damn it, Bacon! You could have invented the BLT or Sir Bacon wrapped hot dogs. Where the hell's your sense of humor? Oh well. Back on topic. This is one of the US's most well known inventions Thomas Edison's version of the light bulb in 1879. Two years before that, in 1877, Edison created the phonograph, which was a device that was capable of recording and playing back audio that was stored on the cylinder. A method that was improved upon 10 years later with Emil Berliner's invention of the disc record. Another really famous invention is the Wright Brothers airplane in 1903. It was said to be impossible, but in reality, it was only the beginning. Just 23 years later, Robert Goddard invents the liquid fuel rocket, ultimately kicking off the space race. Speaking of space, in 1981, George Mueller, with a lot of help, invents the space shuttle. There's a little bit of a time gap in that one, kind of like the invention of the machine gun in 1861 by Richard Gatling, and then the invention of Kevlar made by Stephanie Qualick in 1965, but, you know, good things come to those who wait. Let's finish this up with some of the most influential inventions provided by the good old US of A, starting with chocolate chip cookies. Yeah, that's right, Ruth Wakefield, 1930, made chocolate chip cookies. You're welcome. Earth. Now the final two are massive in scale, the rest pale in comparison. They are what set us apart from the animals and would no doubt be our number one achievement in the eyes of the entire universe. They are the personal computer invented by John Blankenbaker in 1971 and the first mobile phone invented by Dr. Martin Cooper in 1973. These last two inventions would lay the foundation for the devices that assist and even consume our lives every single day. Without them, we would still be shuffling around ancient forms of communication with crudely pressed words forced upon the carcass of brutally murdered forest-dwelling stationary wood pillars, also known as trees. Just watch as these primitive humans struggle with the unruly design of the flaccid tree skin. Those were truly hard times, and America is a thank for ending them. This is not a competition, but just for shits and giggles, let's see how the British contributed. Look at that. Robert Hooke made a tin can telephone. That's adorable. Oh, and don't worry about the rest of this list. I, I can assure you that they are all just as significant as the tin can telephone. Oh, okay, wow, this, this is a long list. Oh, shit. They made the Colossus computer? and SMS texting? Oh, okay, okay, moving on. It's obvious that the United States' departure from British tyranny was the best thing for the entire world, if not the universe itself. But what does the 4th of July mean to us today? Well, much like the transition from newspapers to smartphones, it's become more about leisure. <laughs> really, nigga? For most of the nation, it's a day to be free. A day to leave work behind and meet up with friends or family for a baseball game, a local parade, or the county fair. For the more reclusive types, it means sitting inside and watching Independence Day or the Patriot. The most common activity, however, is the old-fashioned barbecue. Dating as far back as the Native Americans, the barbecue is synonymous with good food and good times. 
standing around talking and laughing with a cold beer in your hand, trying your best to ignore the savory aroma escaping from the grill as the meat sizzles and pops above the dancing flame. Taking notice too soon can leave a person feeling famished well before dinner is finally ready. Or you can be the type of person that stands next to the griller delivering passive-aggressive remarks on how you would be cooking the food right now. Yeah, don't flip them too often now. You don't want to lose your juices. Scoop that one up and put it back down in the exact same spot. Just don't. Don't, don't be that person. The 4th of July has many traditions, but the most well-known and the highest anticipated of them all is fireworks. Displayed in various shapes and colors, fireworks are an alluring spectacle. Some of the biggest fireworks shows can draw in crowds by the thousands. But for those people who do not wish to go elsewhere for their fireworks, there are plenty of personal fireworks available for purchase. You have everything from firecrackers to the mortars they use in the professional fireworks shows. Bottle rockets are a blast, same with Roman candles. There are tons of fun to be had with fireworks. But as it is with too much fun, there's always a risk of injury. Because of these risks, certain states have decided to ban all the fun fireworks. So while other states have this, states such as California, where I live, have shit like this. Because of that, people must get creative to make their fireworks interesting. So, uh, California fireworks are boring as shit, so this is kind of what we do to make them fun. Yeah. Mine's lit. Good. Okay, Go. okay, Go. I'll turn it. I hope this video did well to educate you on America's number one holiday. Now I know this might make some people jealous, but don't despair. I've given you the recipe to be an honorary American. So come next 4th of July, if you want to take part in the festivities, all you need to do is gather some good food, good drinks, and good people. And at the end of the night, blow shit up. Fire. Oh, yeah! It's the American way. And for those of you who might be offended by that last line, if you cannot differentiate the blowing shit up that results in harmless fun and the blowing shit up that results in bodily harm, this holiday is not for you.